That's an interesting question, and it's an easy one to answer. We are ruling upon the earth. I don't like that over the earth because Jehovah's Witnesses were tempted to say it meant suspended over the earth. The reign of Messiah will be on a renewed earth. The text for that that you're going to use over and over again is Daniel 7, 27. The kingdoms under the whole heaven will be given to the saints of the people of the Most High. The saints, that's the holy people. The individuals from the nations, and the key text there is Isaiah 24. And I'll tell you what the Seventh-day Adventists did with that. The people of the world are guilty, so they will be burned up. Only, what does it say there? A few human beings will be left. How few is few? I have no idea. I want to tell you that the founder of Seventh-day Adventism, Ellen G. White, didn't like that idea. She had the concept that in the millennium, Satan would be alone on the earth where the saints, the human saints, would be in the heavens. That is fundamentally false. I want to say to my friends, uh, the Seventh-day Adventists, and she, in her book, The Great Controversy, she leaves out that telling phrase, few men are left. Is that clear? Few mortal human beings will be left after God's day of wrath has played itself out. But they're left as the mortal surviving population over whom the immortal saints, including Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, of course, Abraham is the father of the faithful, all the prophets in the kingdom of God and all the saints of all the ages will then supervise with Jesus' supervision, of course. And I hope that's clear. It shouldn't be difficult. This is classic premillennialism held by the earliest church fathers. And all nations are going to have to serve and obey the saints. There's a feeble translation there sometimes. It's not just obeying Jesus and God. I get that. We know that. But in that astonishing verse, Daniel 7, easy number to remember, 7, 3 times 3 times 3, 27, make this verse known everywhere. It says that all nations and tongues and languages are going to have to serve and obey the saints. Well, you know who the saints are. They're the international church of God in the New Testament time, in our day. The holy people of God, the saints, E-I-E-E. -E -E. I'm using the modern Greek pronunciation because our Greek-speaking friends out there enjoy that. So that's an easy text. And I must also add this, that there, there must be then people to rule over. This is not immortals who have been made such, by the way, at the first resurrection when Christ comes back at his one parousia, second coming. They will have been immortalized, given immortality, and then they'll proceed to rule over mortals. Well, how do mortals get to be there? Not a problem. There are some who at the second coming are very alarmed by what they see happening, and they said, oh my God, save me, help me. And they are allowed to go into that first stage of the kingdom of God, which is the millennial thousand years, as mortals. And you'll find in Isaiah 65 that there will be a long life for these people. They'll be eating so well, living so well. If you die at 100, it says in Isaiah 65, you'll be considered just a kid. So longevity is part of it. Meanwhile, the immortals, those who have been prepared and trained for the coming kingdom in this life, they may have died before the second coming. They get to be resurrected. They may be surviving until the second coming. They're caught up to meet the Lord. There's no noun rapture in the Bible. Only the verb, catching up to meet the Lord at his single parousia. There's no second parousia seven years earlier. Certainly not an invisible parousia in 1914 or various other dates that the Watchtower produced. This isn't that hard. We go out to meet the Lord as he's coming down. You uh, accompany him in the direction in which he's going. He has a one-way ticket back to the earth. His feet, Yahweh's feet actually, but remember that all the second coming verses in the Old Testament, Yahweh's feet, Jesus, as we now know in the New Testament, who is not Yahweh, but Yahweh's agent, his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives on that day. There'll be a huge earthquake. That's the visible manifest, spectacular second coming of Jesus to put an end to the present chaotic reign of man under Satan and to introduce the first stage of the coming kingdom of God on the earth. And those mortals then will have a marvelous life, whether they get immortalized at the end of a period of life then, it's not clear, maybe they come back in the second resurrection, it isn't clear, it doesn't matter. 
The fact is they're going to be supervised by the saints. Paul was very indignant in 1 Corinthians 6 too. Paul is frustrated by his rather difficult to handle congregation, as was normally the case. Don't you know, my dear chaps, he would have said in British, that the saints are going to manage the world. We don't like the word rule now, perhaps that doesn't give us the best sense, but Moffat has managed, administer. Don't you know one of the most basic ABCs of the faith? That you're going to manage the world. And if you can't even settle your little petty squabbles in the church now, how in the world are you going to be able to fit, be fit to manage the world? This is an ABC of basic Christianity.